protesters and strikers are waging a war throughout France against pension reforms. Protesters, millions of protesters have filled the streets. Police warn the demonstrators intend to, quote, destroy, injure, and kill in response to the French government. Uh, sorry, in response, the French government has deployed 13,000 officers, with nearly half of them sent to Paris. Protests continued this morning with striking railway workers in Paris, burning flares and flags. Interior Minister Gérard Dominion said more than 1,000, quote, radical troublemakers could join the marches. Of course, they are joined by ranks of uh, real, uh, uh, teachers and others who are participating in a general strike, showing solidarity against these proposed uh, pension uh, raises in the, in the age that people will receive their pensions. According to AP News, union leaders and those in opposition to President Emmanuel Macron blame his government for the protest violence and have said that his push to raise France's legal retirement age from 62 to 64 sparked it. Trade union protesters have blocked the entrance to Paris's Louvre Museum. Critics say that police officers have used excessive force against protesters and a police oversight body is investigating claims of wrongdoing by officers, again according to the AP. Joining us now to weigh in is international editor at El Ciudadano Medio Platform, Dennis Rogachuk. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to be back on, on The Rising. Yes, thanks for joining us. Uh, tell us more about what you see uh, going on and, and what you think this all means. I think that uh, you know, these mass protests that we're seeing in France right now, it is really, I would say, it's really a culmination of the public anger that, that has been f uh, felt against the presidency of Emmanuel Macron. We have to remember that uh, this attempt to raise the retirement age uh, from 62 to 64 has long been on his agenda. In fact, originally Emmanuel Macron uh, w wanted to push the retirement uh, age to 65, or a bit, a bit uh, gradually. Uh, now, this is actually this essentially formed par a basis of his uh, economic reforms since his first election as president in uh, 2017. Um, uh, but, I would say, but I would say in the current context of the events, you know, the mass protests uh, that we're seeing is actually a sign of, uh, of the weakness of the, of the Macron presidency. And this, we this weakness is expressed uh, most uh, strongly in the lack of the parliamentary majority, which uh, his uh, coalition uh, kind of has uh, because we have to we have to remember that um, although uh, although Emmanuel Macron won the presidential election, uh, his party actually lost uh, the majority in the France's uh, National Assembly. In the previous weeks, he attempted to broker a deal with the uh, right-wing uh, Republicans uh, coalition, France, but uh, that that fell that really fell through. So uh, the only real option that was left to him. Uh, in order to uh, attempt to push through uh, this, you know, uh, this uh, the, the rising of the retirement of the retirement age, was to use the controversial forty nine point three um, article of the of the constitution, basically basically granting himself emergency powers in order to implement uh, this uh, re the, the, this reform, and this of course added a whole uh, another layer another layer of uh, of, say, of public anger and of, uh, let's say, uh, really at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the disgust uh, of, his, of his presidency. Yeah, I think that's some really important context. So what you're saying is that there doesn't seem to be, uh, obviously there's no not a lot of public support for this as evidenced by the protests, <clears throat> but even political support, there's been no ability uh, for Macron to pass this uh, change to the pension uh, uh, age legislatively, uh, politically, and try to claim executive authority to be able to do it, and that's what's provoked this latest round of protests. Can you speak to a little bit more to the history? I mean, why you? what do you think is motivating Macron to take this deeply politically uh, unappealing move uh, and to kind of weather the storm of having, you know, a million-plus protesters in the street of Paris right now, uh, stoppages of picking up uh, garbage, people dumping. Uh, we've seen this incredible footage of, of uh, garbage trucks emptying their their, their garbage in front of cafes while people sit on and, and watch <laughs> passively or join in the streets. You know, why take all of that on if there, is, there seems to be no political support um, kind of legislatively or in, among the public? 
Well, Brian, I believe that you actually illustrated in a great way uh, the way that this uh, that this strike has actually has actually united a great um, sort of uh, a, gr a great number of the different uh, sectors of the French uh, working class. Uh, since I say the main the main driver force of this of the strike is of course uh, the general confederation of labor, but uh, as, as you just mentioned, uh, the uh, sanitary workers and the workers in the yeah. You know, you know, you know, the, the garbage man, and uh, even those, even those who employed in the cleaning service have also have also joined in uh, on the action, uh, as you say. Now, uh, the reason why Macron is pushing this through, I believe, it's actually it's actually rather simple. Uh, we have to remember that uh, since the beginning of the um, of the of the conflict in Ukraine, and since uh, France pledging to uh, to, to support uh, the Ukrainian government. In this in this conflict, and also implementing sanctions uh, against Russia, together with the other uh, members of the European Union and the United States, uh, the France the France's uh, social and economic economic crisis has certainly accelerated. Uh, this is in, uh, this is particularly with, with regards to the uh, you know the rising living costs, uh, rising in, uh, inflation, uh, rising energy prices, uh, everything and. Uh, the rising in the retirement age, age, I believe that one of the main uh, motivators for Macron was uh, was actually this uh, this very economic crisis. Uh, so this is seen as as a measure of trying to, uh, of, of trying to deal with the uh, with the no, with the enormous budget deficits that have been uh, created as a result of um, uh, the rising energy costs mm. uh, in the country. So. Yeah, I mean, that creates an obvious issue. I, I mean, people, you know, people live a lot longer than they used to when, I don't know exactly when France is, uh, you know, specifically structured it this way. The U.S. has raised uh, the retirement age to, I think, what, 67 uh, for many workers. So is there, is there an, you know, a, a, an issue of expecting, you know, younger people, working people to keep you know, providing for people who've retired and are now going to be around for a lot longer than previous generations used to at, at a, you know, at a time of such difficult economic crunches, as you point out. I believe that well, there, are, there are certainly uh, say the social and the cultural uh, aspects uh, of, this, of this reform. We have to remember that uh, France currently has uh, one of the most generous pension systems in the world. I believe that, according to the latest statistics, uh, once the French workers uh, retire, retire uh, on average, on average, uh, their pe their pension is the is equivalent of approximately seventy five percent of the full time earnings of their full time earnings in their previous uh, job, and this is a I'll say this is really like one of the main foundations of the. Um, of the French welfare state is one of the main, say, foundations of, of the of this, you know, of this uh, so of the social fabric uh, of of France, it, and I believe it has uh, also been a, a, a point of pride uh, of the of the French uh, workers for a very long time. Uh, there is uh, there is also definitely this uh, you know th there is this aspect uh, that that, that, you, that you mentioned, uh, which I, which I believe has also been used. Um, you know, this argument has, has, has often say, be, been used as a justification for the for rising of, uh, of the of the retirement age. Um, uh, I believe, but but this is a for reform that certainly would, would, would also would also actually impact the younger generation uh, in the, uh, more so than the generation which has already retired or is about to retire. Because according to Macron, uh, this, uh, this, ch this change will only be fully and completely implemented uh, by 2030. So it will most likely actually uh, affect the, um, uh, the, the population that is currently in their 30s and their 40s and their in their 50s, uh, rather than the retirees that are about to, uh, uh, that are about to end deployment uh, right now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's similarly the case in the United States that an aging population is is or a longer living population is used as a justification for efforts, uh, principally by conservatives, to raise the retirement age here as well. Of course, there are reforms like simply uh, not having a regressive tax to fund Social Security. That also could be an option, but. Uh, in a country where uh, millionaires set the agenda, uh, there's a lot of resistance to actually just taxing the rich uh, to fund retirement programs for working people. Thank you so much for joining us here, Dennis, today. Thank you. And we'll have more rising for you right after this.